Hi guys, welcome back. I certainly hope that by now you would have seen my latest video where we observe a fine example of Intel's core to core line of CPUs and that what can be achieved with some overclocking. Impressed by the results, I had this strong urge to explore the topic of pairing this nearly 15 year old CPU with the current buzzword in the world of modern graphics cards, the RTX. I mean, what could go wrong, right? The 3060 Ti is a very capable modern card released in December of 2020 for alleged price of 399 USD. <laughs> Few scalper jokes aside, this card, when paired up to a decent CPU, can run most games at high settings and even drive a 4K panel. And just like that, the ultimate bottleneck was born. You see where this is going, don't you? Let's push our Q9550 to 3.7 GHz and see what happens next. Starting off with Crisis, and we run into an annoying bug. With the VSync on, game engine only runs at 24 FPS. That is it, no more. And no amount of alt tabbing and turning full screen mode on and off helped to resolve this issue. So, with the VSync off, we saw 49.2 FPS on average. Yes, you hear me right, that's Crisis at 4K with high graphical preset running on Q9550. Interesting that the CPU saw very mediocre utilization and the gameplay was not very smooth. I'm starting to think that this game doesn't really like anything more than 1600 by 1900. Oh well, never mind. Let's try some more. 2013's Tomb Raider was next and this game normally runs quite smooth. Using high preset and the VSync on, I saw solid 60 FPS on average whilst using the in-game benchmark. CPU saw more utilization than with Crisis at around 60%, but we are nowhere near the limit. The GPU seen 80% utilization, so there was room for more if it was needed. Just cruising in Test Drive Unlimited 2, using very high graphical settings but no AA, I saw 52.6 FPS on average. In this title, two or even three CPU cores saw 100% usage most of the time, which was amazing to see. GPU usage was just chilling in mid 50s. In Stalker Call of Pripyat, using maxed out settings but no VSync, I saw nearly 94 FPS on average. The series are not known to be very demanding, but what's really interesting with this game, just one of the CPU cores saw near 100% usage, the rest were not really doing much, and the GPU was in mid 80s. Another great example was Mafia 2. This game runs really well and with all the settings maxed out at 4K, we saw solid 60 FPS. The CPU works hard in this one, often all four cores pegged to 100%. No sweat on the 3060 Ti with about 60% utilization. This was as smooth as Joe's early game jokes. And the devil has returned. Only this time, I nearly lost my mind. So get this, GTA 4 with all of its troubles and this time at 4K with very high settings, I saw 46 FPS on average. But more importantly, not much of hitching and actually smooth gameplay? What is going on? I've got no explanation, do you? Use the comment section down below. Whilst you're at it, please also show some love and hit that subscribe button and if you enjoyed the video, also smash that like button. Do you think that this is safe? GTA 5 next. With high settings at 4K and no MSAA, game run perfectly and smooth at 52 FPS on average. This is another demanding title, CPU was working hard with all of its 4 cores and the GPU is just chilling and not got more than 50% of usage at most of the time. As expected, when in the city, the CPU has to work overtime and the FPS actually drops and hovers to around mid 30s. But as soon as you hit the highway and move out of the city, the FPS follows and goes up. Let's finish this crazy testing with some Fortnite action. And here, using the medium preset, I saw a cool 51 FPS average. Game was playable, but few hitches were still present here and there. Poor CPU working hard and at 100% most of the time too. No drama with the GPU which sat around 50% usage mark. Okay, well that was interesting to say at least. 
I'm blown away by just how much was the Q9550 holding up and I think this is nothing short of excellent. I was not expecting to see those numbers, after all, you would think 4K it is not really easy to drive. Yes, I realize the 3060 Ti is a powerful card, but this was to be the ultimate bottleneck test. Being a PCI Express 4.0 and over a decade newer, it saw limitations left and right. Must say, I enjoyed testing with this combination, but did you? That's all I had for you this week. Please be sure to get out if you can, but come back for next episode of Legacy GPU Battles. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you all soon.